I think the trans issue has, has come on as a more div- well, divisive issue in the context particularly of sports, where it's also been weaponized, uh, and issues around pronouns. I remember the first time I was on Zoom, and all of a sudden I saw these different pronouns, and that even took me, I was like, what's this? Mm -hmm. I didn't fully understand that. I think a combination of those factors, the weaponization of grievance and dehumanization that I see politicians that are exploiting this, like Ron DeSantis notably, but not unique to DeSantis, have also exacerbated this. Gavin Newsom, governor of California, and fool. Fool. The issue of young girls being forced to compete in sports against biological males has been weaponized? Maybe we should ask by whom? Me for noticing? The young girls for saying that it's not fair? Who? May I ask, Governor News? Ah, oh, you. People actually think he should get into this presidential race and take on Joe Biden. They really do. Less and less people excited about Joe Biden because the man's too old. He's too old and he doesn't know what he's saying. Who in the world can listen to this guy and think that he's somehow making sense when he says this? Well, we're going to win and we're going to help. We have plans to build a railroad from the Pacific all the way across the Indian Ocean. We have plans to build in, 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 in Angola, one of the largest solar plants in the world. I can go on, but I'm not. I'm going off script. I'm going to get in trouble. A railroad from the Pacific all the way across the Indian Ocean. And you wonder why people are looking for another candidate. You wonder why that is. Remember, they went with Biden after the State of the Union because he sounded like he was wheeling and dealing. And it was like, all right, this is the best we can do. There's nobody else who could do the job. And now they're like, oh, wow, he's older than we thought. But Gavin Newsom is the answer? Someone's weaponizing this whole thing about boys and girls sports. Yes. The so-called movement that we were just talking about that says girls shouldn't have a say. It's okay for boys to take their spot. The girls should just lay back and take it. It is the most messed up, misogynistic nonsense ever. Maybe not as messed up as this. You see what's happening there. We do see businesses moving out for various reasons, but some of them saying they're concerned about the crime in the area. When you see that happening to your beloved city, what goes through your mind, and, and do you think something's going wrong there? No, I think they're, they're struggling to recover from the pandemic. They're struggling uh, to come back. They're struggling with the, the, the macroeconomic shifts, particularly as it relates to uh, telework, as it relates to what's the future of a downtown. Is it stacking of offices or stacking of people? And they're in the process of reason zoning and rebirth and reimagination. By the way, I've seen that in San Francisco for decades. Oh, it's not the crime. It's not the people actually defecating on the street, Governor Newsom. It's all because of telework. I don't argue that there aren't some telework challenges. I'm just saying it's not all because of telework. That is an incredibly dishonest answer. And you'll get more of that if you have Gavin Newsom in office. But that's actually not the story. The story is Barack Obama going at Tim Scott, well, clearly for not being black enough. Is that it? I think there is a long history of African-American or other minority candidates within the Republican Party who will validate America and say, everything's great and we can all make it. Nikki Haley, I think, has a similar mm-hmm. approach. I'm not being cynical about Tim Scott individually. I am maybe suggesting that the rhetoric of can't we all get along, that has to be undergirded with an honest accounting of our past and our present. 
this statement from former President Obama, or I should say President Obama, um, on Senator Tim Scott and on Ambassador Nikki Haley, plays into this larger conversation of if you're conservative and you're black, you're not really black. And if you're conservative and you're Indian, you're not really Indian or you're not really a minority or you're not really a woman or you're not really gay, that somehow... Having a different point of view removes one's authenticity. Kira Davis joins us right now, podcaster, television personality, and author. Her latest book, Drawing Lines, Why Conservatives Must Begin to Battle Fiercely in the Arena of Ideas, is available at Amazon.com or wherever fine books are sold. Drawing Lines, Why Conservatives Must Begin to Battle Fiercely in the Arena of Ideas. Uh, and I I did the thing, Kira, today. I don't think I've ever done with you. Um, I said, hey, you want to get racial like that was that was that was my text it would be like uh you texting me and saying hey i i I need a jewish friend come here um but this i think this is messed up from obama this is this is really where i think the culture war uh is at that somehow being black and having a different point of view not even being conservative somehow uh whether it's obama whether it's sunny hostin whether it's joy behar on the view takes away the idea that you're actually black at all. Yeah, well, first of all, I love how Obama says, you know, um, there's a certain type of person who just wants to talk about how everything in America is great. Um, and that's fair. Every Everything about America is, is not great. But is anything great about America? And this is the thing that's lacking on the left, right, that they don't want to have those conversations about anything being great. But the the uh, response to anybody who like Tim Scott or Nikki Haley who wants to say, hey, we we have our issues, but we love this country and we 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 can do more. But we have so much already. Um, of course, the response is to negate the humanity of those people. And that's straight out of the Marxist playbook. That's straight out of, you know, Saul Alinsky, you dehumanize the other person. So, of course, there's no way to be conservative slash Republican and black or and gay and a woman, uh, because to be conservative or Republican, you nailed it, Tony, where we are in the culture wars right now to be those things is to not be human. So the progressive left, as embodied in the Democrat Party, has been the the has been the people who have been encouraging this mindset. And Obama is just as bad as the next person. And as a matter of fact, we could say that's why we had Trump, right? People responding to that dehumanization from Obama's camp and from Democrats. So the issue isn't race. The issue is humanity. I have been making the argument, and I have not had a chance to go over this uh, with you. I am making the argument that if we take a look at this grouping of letters, LGBTQIA+, that this is not people. This is a political movement. The flag is not the gay pride flag. Uh, this the, the flag, and what the rainbow represented, the flag is a, a flag of a political movement. And that somebody who is gay or lesbian or, or bisexual, who may have an issue with the T, specifically children, they would be excommunicated from the movement. Is Is the concept of black America... A movement, because if you ask me if the concept of Jewish America is a movement, I'll tell you yes, and I know I'm not invited to the party. Uh, that's a good question. Is Black America a movement? I don't know. No, you know, Black America is is America, but there is a certainly, of course, a political movement um, housed within Black America, and it's been taken advantage of quite well, if you ask me, quite expertly by the Democrat Party, and they've learned how to harness the movement within the community. Again, I think all of the, I think the movement is progressivism. That's the movement and everything else kind of falls yes. under that. And, and getting back to my original point, the, the way that you combat cogent arguments, you know, the kind that Tim Scott, Tim Scott is a brilliant guy. He's an intelligent guy. He's, he knows how to express what he means to say. Um, and so the way that you negate that 
coming out of the mouth of that guy is to dehumanize him. And that's where we are. And I find that very concerning because when you dehumanize a person, when you take away all of the the things that they're proud of about their identity, be it, be it race or be it where you live, where you're from, when you take away all those things and you rob a person of their humanity, you make it okay to do whatever you want to those people. And that's the thing we're seeing happening too, right? We're seeing violence start to pop up. Um, in some of these movements, particularly in the, in the trans movement these days. But I don't have to point out Black Lives Matter and everything we went through with them and are still going through. So these are very dangerous concepts. That I don't think and it's why I wanted to talk to you today. We don't usually get racial. That's not our our relationship. But I think it's important to be thinking about this. Like we are living in dangerous times. Talking to Kira Davis, the book Drawing Lines, Why Conservatives Must Begin to Battle Fiercely in the Arena of Ideas. You can find that at Amazon.com. I I, I get your point, right? Because I utilize the term Black America like I did Jewish America. And you often hear those things, but I don't actually know what they are because, as you stated, and I agree, it is uh, uh, America. I could argue that if you were to take a sampling of people who are Jewish of different uh, political stripes, there might be some similarities in experiences. And that could be very true of of a a sampling size of people who are black. But this was, was, was very specific to the idea that the authenticity, the black enough conversation only comes from a political sphere. In the work you did in the in the book, Drawing Lines, um, as you say, it is time to draw our lines in the sand as Christians and conservatives by engaging in public conversations with truth and conviction. Is this one of the conversations you were thinking about? Is this is this like like I, I more went to that even. Is this one of those conversations that you are referring to in the in the concept of the book, Drawing Lines of 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 being able to push back and. And, and what is that pushback? What is the idea that you would counter with, that you would suggest Tim Scott counter with or somebody else counter with or just offer up, proffer up as a counter to what it is, the dehumanizing as you're discussing it, of what Barack Obama is saying? No, I, I like that question. That's a good question. And in the book, what I'm saying is it's time for people to get a little aggressive. So the conservative slash Republican way to deal with stuff is through policy or like Obama even identified it himself in that clip, right? Like, oh, the whole can't we all get along thing. Like, that's what they consider conservatism. And I'm saying that, like, I would love to get along. I think all of us would love to just get along and everybody mind their own business. And we've been trying to do that. But while we were doing that, the culture was wrestled away from us. So we have to be aggressive. So the guys like Tim Scott, and I don't know that this is in his nature, but this is what I'm telling people in the book. We need to make this a part of our nature, at least for now. The way you handle these situations is to push back to do what Breitbart did, to, to, to respond to Obama saying, you know what, what you just said is grossly disrespectful and it's racist. So you need to be held accountable for what you're saying. And I'm not going to engage in this conversation with you if you're not going to respect me as a human being or you're not going to respect my right to be here and my right to participate in American politics, American culture. It means standing up and saying, no, I'm very literal about drawing that line, you know, drag your foot across the sand and draw the line and say, all right, this is where we stop. I'm no longer having a conversation with you. Here's my answer. No, we're not going to welcome drag queens into the classroom. No, we are not going to mutilate children in the name of a political movement. No, we are not going to defund the police. So any other conversation around this has to start with the word no. I'm asking people to get a little bit aggressive because um, this like go along to get along thing is not working and they've pushed us all the way back to the edge of the cliff. We have no more yardage behind us. So I think people, unfortunately, are going to have to start getting not rude, not mean, just aggressive. There's, we're not talking the same language as the other side anymore. So I'm not sure that we need to be trying at this point. If we're not talking the same language... How does one respond in a language that they'll understand? Or is it even about them understanding? 
It's not because there is no understanding. Listen to look at what, where we are right now, Tony. We are actually having adult conversations about what a woman is. Like we're in crazy town now. So there aren't like intelligent conversations to be had. You can't reason with crazy. You know what I mean? And we're in crazy times now. I'm all for reasoning. That's what I do on my show. Just listen to yourself. I reason through issues and talking points. And if you meet somebody who's just a curious fellow traveler and wants to have a friendly debate or conversation, great, go for it. But these people that you see like on The View and, you know, Joy, the Joy Behars of the world or the Joy Reeds of the world, they don't need, we don't need to entertain them as if they're saying intellectual things, as if they're saying anything that's going to get us closer to a peaceful coexistence with, with anyone. They hate us. Their goal is to destroy us. This is the gist of this whole conversation so far, robbing people of their humanity. They don't see us as human. We see them as human, and that's great. So the, I don't know that this is a time for conversation any, anymore. Between people like you and me, sure, we're, we're discussing. But with the other side, I don't think right now is a time for conversation. Their conversation is crazy right now. Kira Davis, the book Drawing Lines, Why Conservatives Must Begin to Battle Fiercely in the Arena of Ideas. Find it at Amazon.com, wherever fine books are sold. Uh, you can get free delivery tomorrow, so if you want it for Father's Day, you feel free. You go right nice. ahead. Kira, always a pleasure. Appreciate you greatly. More is coming up. I'm Tony Katz.